Hello Year 3, welcome back. A new term and a new topic. And this is a good one. We are going to be learning about ancient Greece. So if we have a look at a timeline, then the dinosaurs would have happened way, way, way back, far off the timeline. We would need to make a massive timeline to have them as part of it. At the start of this timeline, I've put the end of the Stone Age. If you remember when the Stone Age became the Bronze Age, and in our game, our villages changed from stone tools to bronze swords. A little bit later on, and we've got the Egyptians with their square based pyramids. And then a thousand years later, we have the Greeks. They come just before the Romans, and the Romans covered before and after the year zero. But if you remember, we did go over this when we were looking at the clocks and the time. Uh, the timeline is split into BC and AD. So BC, the times before Jesus was born, it's like a countdown to Jesus being born. And AD meant Anno Domini, times after Jesus was born. Following on from the Romans, just over a thousand years later, we have medieval times with knights and castles, which you may have looked at in year two, and you'll look at again in year five. And then 2020 AD, now, today, this year, there's a picture of us. So that's where Greece is in time compared to some other topics which you might have heard of or know about. But where is Greece in the world? Well, Greece is a part of Europe. The world is split into eight continents, eight parts, and we and Greece are both in the part called Europe. Now, if we zoom into that and look a bit closer, here's Europe. This is where we are, and here's where Greece is. Greece is actually only about half as big as the United Kingdom. It's quite a small country. It's also a country which is very hilly. It's got a lot of hills and a lot of mountains, which makes it quite difficult to build on and to live in. These maps are topographical maps, which show the hills and mountains of the two countries. So if you have a look at the UK, you can see all the green, flat, fertile land, which is good for growing on and easy to build on. If you have a look at Greece, you can see there's a lot less of that flat, fertile land. In fact, there's a lot more of the brown, hilly mountains everywhere, which are very difficult to build on, makes getting around a lot harder. And it's a bit harder to grow crops there and to manage cattle. Even though it's smaller than the UK, ancient Greece was split up into over 1,000 different city-states. A city-state is like a mini country. For example, you would have a main city like Chichester, which would have city walls and it would have the main temple in the middle. And that city might control an area of farms around it. And it might control some villages as well. So maybe, so maybe it would control Mundum and Southbourne and Lavan. But then next door, the next city over, maybe Bogner, would be its own city state. And they would have their own farmland and they would have their own small villages around. And this kept happening all over the country, as you can tell by the multicolored map. These are just some of the main areas, but they would have actually been split into over a thousand different ones. Some cities were more powerful than others, especially two, which we'll learn about later on, one called Athens and one called Sparta. Because it was so hilly and there were so many mountains in Greece, it was very hard to get around. If you lived in one city, say Athens, and you wanted to go and trade some of your goods, sell some olives, people who lived in Thebes. To get there, if you were traveling over land, you would have to go up the mountains and down the mountains and up the mountains and down back into the valley where the cities were built. This would take a long time. So in ancient Greece, what people did when they wanted to travel is often they would travel by boat. They would get on a boat and they would sail 
brown next to the coast and then get off when they got near the place they wanted to go. That was a lot quicker and it meant that a lot of big cities ended up being next to the sea. Many Greek cities were also on islands, so you had to use a boat to get there. In the ancient world, the sea was a bit like a motorway. It let people get to places a lot faster. But what was life like? For the people who lived in ancient Greece, men were often farmers, would have to work very hard in that hilly land to get enough crops. Maybe they would have goats on the hills or they could grow olives. If your city state started fighting the city state next door, if Chichester decided to go and fight Bogner, then a lot of the men would have to put on armour and go and fight for your city. They couldn't fight for too long though because they had to get back to their farms. In Greece, women mainly stayed at home. They would have to spin thread or weave cloth. Women were considered beautiful for not having a suntan because that showed that they hadn't left the house. They helped to run things at home and were in charge of things like meal times. Boys in ancient Greece could go to school when they were seven years old or older. But sending your son to school cost money, and so a lot of them didn't go for very long. You might think that sounds like a nice idea, but instead they would have to go straight into work as fishermen or craftsmen helping to build things. Like women, girls had to stay at home. They learned to do things like cooking and cleaning and making clothes, and if they were lucky enough to have slaves, how to order them about. All children like to play games with knuckle bones where you throw bones in the air and try and catch them on your hand. They also played ball games with balls made from pig's bladders blown up, a bit like a balloon or a football. There are lots of pictures of children keeping animals like dogs and geese and chickens. In Greece there were also quite a lot of slaves. Slaves were people who were captured in battles. Some slaves had an okay life in rich households where they looked after babies and did the shopping. Other slaves had a sad life where they had to work in mines underground to mine metal ore, or they had to work in the bottom of ships, rowing all day long. What exactly did Greeks eat? Well, for breakfast, they would normally have a small meal with some bread, maybe some fruit, and they could dip it in wine because the bread would be quite hard. For lunch, they would also have a small meal. They didn't care too much about lunch. It'd probably be something like bread and cheese, cheese sandwich. Dinner time is where Greeks had their main meal. This could be porridge, which is a strange thing to have for dinner perhaps, but the Greeks didn't think so. They'd have it with cheese and fish and vegetables and eggs and fruit. If you were very rich, you could afford to have meat with your meal as well, maybe from rabbits or deer or cows or pigs or even octopus. Having meat was only really for rich people because it was so expensive. The Greeks didn't know about sugar and so they didn't have a lot of the fancy desserts we have today. Instead they might have some fruit or some olives or some cheese drizzled with honey. What about clothes? Well, Greek women would normally wear a chiton, which is a long dress. On top sometimes they might wear a hamation, which is a bit like a cloak or a shawl. Young men would wear short tunics, a bit like t-shirts, to show off their legs. Older men would wear longer tunics to keep their legs warm. Everyone who worked outside would wear large wide sun hats to keep the sun off because in Greece it's a lot hotter than it is in the UK. Um, it might be a new half term, but I have an old request for you. As it gets hotter, remember to be kind to each other, year three.